So just when you thought it couldn't get any more bizarre, they're putting up scaffolding in Moscow for a huge signing ceremony that the uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin is going to hold tomorrow and he will sign the annexation of four more areas of Ukraine at roughly about 15%. The bizarre thing about all this, though, is in Zavrisa, for example, which he says is now Russian because 99.9% .9 of people voted for it. <laughs> as they apparently they had armed soldiers going from flat to flat to make sure people signed on the dotted line. Anyway, um, he's going to annex, annex all these things, saying they're Russian, um, even though Ukraine still holds on to half of Zavarid. So anyway, uh, Russian-backed officials had earlier claimed the five-day exercise secured almost total popular support. Well, there's a surprise. Let's talk about it with Cormac Smith. Cormac is a former strategic communications advisor to Plavlo Klimkin when he was Ukraine's foreign affairs minister between 2016 and 2018. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, Cormac. Ian, good evening, and thank you very much for having me on. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure. OK, I, I just, I don't know what to make of these elections. Nobody thinks they're genuine. It appears they're just completely fabricated. What, what do we make of this? Uh, Russia has form on this. Look, um, you mentioned Pavlo Klimkin, who was the minister that I worked for, was very fond of saying Russia lies on an industrial scale. It's what they do as part of their um, raison d'etre or their, 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 their whole hybrid war um, technique. Look, we saw it here in Salisbury in 2018 when Russian agents tried to kill the Skripals with um, Novichok. And at the time, I had just come back from Ukraine and I was working in the National Security Communications team in the Cabinet Office advising on Russian disinformation. And the open source team in the Foreign Office identified 47 different false narratives that the Kremlin put out um, about the Skripal poisoning, including Theresa May had done it and it had blown in on the wind from Portland down and everything else. Look, the Russians have form on this. They did this in 2014 with the illegal annexation of Crimea when they held elections at the barrel of a gun. Nobody in the international community of any credibility has ever recognised those. Ukraine certainly doesn't. The one thing that I would say, we are increasingly seeing the absolute unspeakable atrocities and evidence of those atrocities that have been perpetrated against the Ukrainian people in the occupied territories coming out. The UN has now put its full weight behind those. Why? And, and why would people in those occupied territories vote 90, nearly 100 percent to be part of Russia? It is there is no credibility to this. Um, you know, what more can I say? But it's 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 part of what Russia does. It's, dis right. it's disinformation they like. OK, so this is the bit I don't understand. So in uh, Zaporizhia, for example, um, the Russians are claiming it's now part of Russia. Well, half of Zaporizhia is still held by the Ukrainians. How does this work? It doesn't work. And I mean, look, I, I always love quoting better men and women than myself. And um, Dmitro Kuleba, who is now Ukraine's foreign minister and a man that I worked closely with when I was out there, was interviewed. He did a great interview um, uh, on um, an American TV show, the, um, 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 the, um, the Late Show, I think, last week when he was in the States. And he was asked ahead of these referenda, what he thought. And he said, look, they're meaningless. He said he can annex parts of the moon if he wants. It doesn't mean anything. Um, he's obviously doing this because it ties in, and this is what the, this is what we've got to understand. It ties into Russia's um, um, stated strategy of use of nuclear weapons, that they will use nuclear weapons if they have to defend Russian territory. So by doing this, there's a big bully bluff to say this is now Russian territory. If you continue, um, um, if you continue fighting against this territory, then we might just use nuclear weapons. Well, the Ukrainians have made it very, very clear that they have no intention of paying any um, heed to that. This is sovereign Ukrainian territory, and they fully intend to take it back. What's important. Ian, is that the international community does not blink. And so far, we have not. We need to double down on the, um, on, on the supply of the sort of heavy weapons um, that the Ukrainians need to do the fighting. And we need to double down on sanctions, which 
um, and I speak to Alexei Mikheyev, who's a good friend of mine, who's there, who's the, with the Ukrainians' main guy on sanctions. And Alexei tells me, "Look, it's a long, it's a long-term thing, but sanctions really are starting to bite, and they hurt Russia more than Russia cares to admit." So this is a bluff. Um, but having said that, you know, we know we, we, I would use the term, we're now dealing with a cornered rat and we're dealing with a criminal and we're dealing with a clearly a very dangerous individual. So I, it's clear that, you know, our leaders are taking this very serious. Um, I've said what I think we need to do publicly, what our leaders will be doing, um, in terms of communicating very clearly with the Kremlin, and we've heard various, including Joe Biden, talk about those messages that have been given is very important as well. Now, we will never be told quite rightly what they're saying to the Kremlin, but those messages need to be very, very robust in terms of the consequences for Russia should they even think of resorting to nuclear weapons. Do you think he would? He's a criminal, but is he, is he a maniac? Look, there's better men than me can't read the mind of Vladimir Putin. Personally, okay, I'll stick my neck out, and it's my opinion. Um, I don't think so, because I think that ultimately, I think this guy is, one, he is a bully. And most of us have grown up, we know how bullies behave and how they operate. Um, but two, he is first and foremost self-interested. And at the moment, he's got so much money, it's not even about the money, it's about he's now thinking about his own legacy. And I listened recently to Mikhail Kordakovsky, who was once the second richest man in Russia and was locked up by Putin for 10 years and is now based in London and is one of the foremost um, leaders of the opposition against the Kremlin. And he was explaining, look, this guy's a criminal, he operates as a criminal. Um, he said, but if you if you appease him, you just make him more angry and he sees it as weakness. The only thing that makes him think and makes him stop is when he gets strength. And of course, this is an old truism that anybody who has ever dealt with Russia in um, diplomatic terms way before Putin will always tell you Russia understands only strength and power. Um, that's the way they, that's the way they operate. And unfortunately, it's my view. And in the time that I was in, that I was really involved, what I saw was across Europe, um, you know, as um, consistent efforts to appease Russia and to say we can't use that sort of language and we, it will annoy the Russians and we must keep talking. Um, it, you know, clearly hasn't done any good. We didn't act on the Budapest Memorandum in 2014 when they illegally annexed Crimea and invaded Donbass. For the sake of listeners who may not be aware, the, the Budapest Memorandum in 1994 was signed to guarantee Ukraine's territorial integrity in return for Ukraine giving up what was at the time the world's third largest nuclear arsenal. Now, clearly Russia, who were a signatory, tore up and spat on that historic document. But I'm afraid to say ourselves, the Brits and the Americans, um, kind of sat, we kind of sat on our hands and we, yes, we sanctioned Russia and the sanctions were pretty ineffectual at the time. Um, we've come to the game late. I think we are really, we are really backing Ukraine at the moment. My own personal message is we need to, in face of these threats, we need to double down with that support. Thank you very much, Cormac. Cormac Smith, former strategic communications advisor to Pavlo Klimkin when he was Ukraine's foreign affairs minister. It's 16 and a half.